It's Monday, October the 21st. It's 2.02 p.m. in the afternoon, 14.02. I'm Joey, only Caribou weather dude. Upon hitting recording, at least it's 14.02. Not when you'll be seeing this, of course. BC just got its butt severely kicked, and I hope I use strong enough wording ahead of time to tell you what was coming, because uh, it pretty much played out exactly how I expected. Now, I got to say, I would have used stronger language, but some doubt was sown into me by meteorologist Mark, and he was right to do that last week, Thursday. And sometimes you need to have all the evidence in order to use the strongest language. So because of the things Mark had suggested, that there wasn't the snowpack, it wasn't as late in the year yet, um, there was some doubt in my mind, at least, as to how bad the flooding situation would be. But it was bad enough, okay? So it did play out how I imagined it, even if I didn't use a strong enough language on the channel here to really assert what was going to happen. But I th hope that's why you keep coming back here to Joey on the Caribbean Weather Dude YouTube channel. Hit like, share, subscribe, because I tend to give you a pretty good lowdown on what's going to happen in British Columbia. This is the bad news show. Today, I mean, we really only have uh, a bunch of nice days ahead of us for British Columbia, and we'll look at how that is. Right now, the nastiness we had is moving out. It still flurries a little bit here, but I was just in Quinell, and it's sunny. It's starting to break out in sunshine there. Quite nice. So, couple days of niceness but then we're right back into another pacific storm they're very strong storms we're having this year so this is the bad news show let's go there it is this is bad news my god falling out right now anything could happen get on wow i'll watch the video later they dry mop in this although not an official sponsor this episode is brought to you by nahani construction they uh hire me for a job treated me extra good and that's why it's possible for me to get by another whole week of my life, thanks to them. But a uh, good company, and they have lots of projects they're doing around. So if you're looking for an employer, maybe check them out. Really good bunch of people. I really enjoyed my days working with them. So Nahani Construction. We'll talk about details of what happened last weekend in a minute, but we'll just uh, have a look over at our storm that's moving into Alberta right now. 10 to 15 centimeters expected in the foothills. They will. Uh, the accumulations will vary because the warm, the ground is still warm. It will cause some snow to melt. Uh, highest snowfalls are expected over the higher terrain, of course, where the moisture will be attracted to that, but also temperatures will be a little lower, 25 centimeters as possible at higher terrain. So if you're traveling into the Alberta country right now, you're into the Rockies or you're in the foothills, you're going to run into some really, really nasty weather still for a little while longer. And if you go just to further east, out towards Brooks, Alberta is, for example, in Calgary as well, in this stretch, uh, Brandon, Ma Brandon Houck reports that he's getting snow right now, 5 to 10 centimeters in Brooks, Alberta, and other places where Brandon is before the snow ends tonight. But all in all, when you look at Canada, she's pretty good up there, except for a blizzard warning in the very far north up there in Palutuck and way up at Clyde River on Baffin. There's 10 centimeters expected there today. So weather summary from the last few days. Strong atmospheric river gave copious amounts of rain and strong wind gusts to the south coast of BC since Friday. The following is a summary of weather event information received as of 7 p.m. on the 20th of Sunday. So this is last night's information still. 256 mills in Coquitlam town site, 203 West Vancouver, 175 in Vancouver Harbor. As you go up the valley, it decreases until you get to Hope where it's at 99 mills still. A very, still a lot of rain, 99 mills. There was a Sea to Sky corridor hit 186 at Port Mellon and 73 mils up at Whistler. Again, the further you go inland, the less of that you got. Rainfall totals on Kennedy Lake were 318 mils. Tofino hit 218, so they're leading the pack. Bowser, 117, and it goes on down as you're going to the east side of the island, less and less seashell getting 68 on the Sunshine Coast. Meanwhile, in the southern Ontario, Coquihalla Summit did get 71 centimeters. Revelstoke and Nacus both are in the 50s. Maximum wind gusts in the south coast recorded at Herbert Island were 122. Uh, so these are official wind gusts. We saw weather stations that were reporting 140s and 180s, uh, and they very well may be accurate. But these are stations that are maintained by Environment Canada, and they can officially attest to these wind. But still, very strong wind gusts on these land-based 
uh, weather stations, 83, even at Saturna, Sawasan hitting 67. So uh, that was probably why you were not able to go on the ferry for a little while when that was going on. Wind gusts in the interior. Lytton still hits 74, and Prince George hit 67. Williams Lake hit 65, Penticton 65. So there were some pretty strong winds that came and went in this. Rainfall records were also set. 67.7, it just eclipsed in Squamish. But West Vancouver smashed through a record, 134.6. The old record was 34 mils. 34 mils is still a lot in a day. Okay, West Vancouver, Vancouver area, significantly better than its old record. They've been keeping records there since 1896. 67.1 was the new record, 59.7 is the old. So people tell me this is normal weather. Well, no. This is record-breaking weather, at least daily records, especially. Up to 117 mils in Pitt Meadows. That smashed the old record, where they've been keeping records since 1874. Okay, smashed the old record. Blew right through it. No wonder there's flooding. No wonder there is catastrophes. No wonder some people lost everything, including someone who may have lost their life when their home was fucking swept away. This isn't normal fall weather. It's not unheard of. It's not suspicious in that, you know, it's something completely out of left field. No, of course, big Pacific storms are normal in the North Pacific. However, the intensity of it at this time of year is noteworthy. It's noteworthy, and it was obvious that it was going to be problematic for the province when it came. Langley smash the old record 117 over 42 and as you go on down 89 chilliwack 89 agassi 71 hope uh victoria even breaking its record in a cusp just eclipsing its old record the records reported here have been derived from a section of historical stations in the geographic area that were active during the period of record all stream flow advisories flood watches and flood warnings are now over in british columbia congratulations we weathered another one Here's the good news. Only southeastern BC is uh, still in this precipitation, whatever's spilling over from that warning that's going on in Alberta. High pressure is being established through the western United States and on the eastern side too. There's just this one little area of instability. That was the low pressure system, the upper level low that was sitting over New Mexico and Arizona and gave some crazy. Roswell was flooded out crazy precipitation totals that came in with that one so it's riding up the edge of this high towards the great lakes area more or less and it's attached now to the low that's come through bc it's dragging in behind it this is now our alberta clipper more or less it's bringing significant snow into alberta still at this hour in many places and if you're through northern saskatchewan there'll be a bit of that there as well going on and into manitoba proper northern ontario northwestern ontario but bc although cloudy right now in the afternoon looking pretty nice all in all we got this high pressure ball this is the guy i was telling you about last episode 1042 extremely high pressure now it's gonna take over this week and it's gonna really give us some nice weather but as you can see the tail of our atmospheric river and the instabilities out there ready to make the new storm and as we watch the graphics through this episode, the remainder of this episode, we're going to see how this plays out. We see a little bit of snow going on, like I just said, in Sask and Manitoba North, Alberta in some of that as well today, Southern BC getting some rain, a little bit of flurries here along the eastern parts of BC, but nothing, it's not like substantial snow falling, it's just kind of the air has got this snowy mist going on, right? So now we can see the, the remain, remnants of our last storm or what it was feeding off of is ready to feed another one now it says low but it's at 1007 that's not that low but this 1044 is so extremely high up there that it uh, is quite low uh, a lot of bc sitting nice right now by the time we're on wednesday afternoon high pressure building in 1028 very high we'll see on the wells weather station uh later this week if we achieve anything like that thank you to diggy's diner for the wells weather station now I see the remnants of our BC storm is 
by Wednesday, late in the day, moving through northern Ontario. And the backside of it's snow up in northern Quebec, and the front side of it is rain. And, you know, a little bit of flurries in northern BC. But all in all, we're looking at a really nice week, right? I don't expect we'll see very much for weather warnings or anything like that until we get closer to the weekend. Now, here is the kicker. Here's our two storms, two mid-latitude cyclones. One is above and one is below the high pressure bulge and they're going to basically squeeze this high out and force their way together and now we have a pretty good idea who's going to win and it is going to be the northern guy but it's going to take a more southern track than maybe it looked like last time we were watching here and it really seemed like it wanted to hug up the alaska coast no this wants to be more challenging for bc doesn't seem like we have quite the same uh, moisture to work with in behind it, but 975 already quite low, dropping down 967 by Saturday. Looks like we get a pretty good week. The tail of it's going to slam in through. We're going to see another one of those big wind situations up through Haida Gwaii, North Vancouver Island, West Vancouver Island, up the strait. See some big winds again at that time. Look at the high pressure sitting over most of North America having very nice weather for the 26th of October. Now it will remain to be seen what that'll mean for precipitation. We have a pretty good idea what it wants to do, I guess, for now, but uh, to still kind of guess at specifics when it's Monday right now. Now we're looking a week away. I don't really like to do that too much, but what we do see here is our Pacific storm train continues one after another with possibly one, two punch starting in the weekend, working its way through next week. Two very strong storms again, quite likely will be hurricane strength lows. On Monday afternoon, BC clearing out, conditions getting better and better and better. Some lingering nonsense in behind, lingering garbage in behind our storm that's leaving. But as it, you know, lingers, it's not the bulk of the precipitation. That is really falling in Alberta this afternoon and into this evening. And here we see our high pressure taking over, looking very nice for BC as we come overnight Tuesday. Maybe even see some stars in some places. Again, a little bit of lingering flurries in behind. That's just stuff sort of dragging moisture that's dragging in behind the main low, which isn't that low by the time you get to Tuesday morning anymore. It's only sitting at about 1,002 millibars, whereas the high pressure in behind is substantial. What's going on? You can see strong winds on Tuesday in northern BC. It looks like there. The tight isobars will indicate strong winds. We got some, some strange bulges and curves and things like that going on in those uh those isobars strong winds still continuing northern bc looks like tuesday afternoon so that's something to sort of watch for northern bc but all in all the yukon may be taking a little bit of snow alaska getting slammed maybe some of that spilling over northwestern territories is a pretty good looking little bulge of squalls going through there maybe you're going to see some blizzard like conditions into northern Quebec and the long tail is dragging it behind. It may trigger some thunderstorms through the Great Lakes and through Ontario. Michigan looks like there too. But BC for the most part, you know, little flurries on Wednesday, but this isn't this isn't crazy stuff. Short wave here in these isobars is allowing for some of that precipitation to kind of squeeze in. I don't think that's a big, big deal. We already see now on Wednesday at 11 a.m. our storm that we expect to form more or less off the California coast is beginning to dig in. Well, why are these storms so extra strong this year? And it, this isn't just a matter of the fact that we have a La Nina coming, so there's a track that's bringing storms into BC. There was strong storms last year in the North Pacific too, and they went other places. Why are the storms seeming so extra strong this year? And the answer is very simple. Sea temperature. That's your answer right there. The ocean is still very warm so we're like we're expecting a la nina pattern to settle in behaving that way but when you look at ocean temperature still very warm very warm 21 degrees even as you come up to bc much warmer than average for bc waters sitting at 14s and 12s as you go further up the coast but as you're coming into the southern coast of bc and vancouver island still really warm water there right so that's helping keep warm air you can see where the warm air is if you look at the temperatures they're almost exactly where the sea temperature is warm so this is the mechanism that delivers warm air and here's our mechanism that delivers cold there's still very cold temperatures going on look at that monday at two in the afternoon here which is overnight in russia minus 26 is there in siberia right and then greenland too so we got some cold weather up there it's getting darker and darker 
And this is a normal thing that's always going to happen. You're going to have cold temperatures at the North Pole. Whether the cold temperatures will result in enough recovery from the extra warm summers, that's part of the issue. But you can see the warm temperatures are going to mix with the cold temperatures and you're going to get an extra strong storm. So why is the ocean extra warm? Thursday overnight, Thursday morning, I should say, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., we see both our storms now starting to take form. This is where they typically do up in the Aleutian Islands, but this one is getting itself extra angry, even though, and now that this high has been feeding it cooler air, even though it's forming further south, it's still doing mid-latitude cyclone things early on its stages of development. And they're squeezing this high out by the time you come to Thursday noon BC time. High pressure mostly staying in BC. We do have flurries in the mountains and whatnot, but none of that looks all that crazy. It's starting to shovel in more and more, but we're not we're not looking at massive snowfall. I think a lot of that's going to be in these big mountains up in the northwest. Still for most of BC where most of the people live, that high pressure is going to be more or less your story through the day on Thursday yet yeah, and into Friday. But you can see how big our storms are getting now and they have moisture to work with, both of them. The southern one has more moisture to work with, but that's okay because this northern one's going to steal it. Its conveyor is going as counterclockwise as they do straight into this storm and it steals it and it's cold air it's bringing in. This guy is going to start stealing and they're going to merge together and create a very aggressive storm through the weekend. But Friday looking nice for BC through the prairies looking real nice. High, uh, high, uh, high isobars, high pressure. Our storm now at 980 on the ECMWF by Friday. Looking stronger and stronger. We will revisit this in time. Maybe Wednesday we'll have a new forecast and really look at the specifics. Strong winds up the coast again. Repeat pattern. And it's a matter of where is this guy going to bumble around at. The GFS there we saw earlier really showed it wanting to kind of bounce around and stall around for a little while. So as we come into Saturday, now we're looking at, you know, Saturday morning, we're waking up to heavy precipitation on the coast, heavy precipitation through the coast mountains, northern BC starting to take it pretty good, southern BC. I mean, you know, this may all change, so we'll revisit this all on Wednesday, like I just said. But it looks like a strong event, although I don't think it will eclipse for southern BC what we just had. But there's a familiar thing happening here, even if it's uh, so far doesn't look to me like we have an atmospheric river repeat of the last weekend, but we have a strong storm. We got miserable weather coming in and I think it's going to last for a couple days. So we will visit that Saturday, Sunday, looking nasty this next week. So get things done this week. If you can outside, well, conditions are more or less nice and temperatures in the afternoon are still workable because you may come into Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Then we got another storm in behind. Both models show both main models that I like to use. Like we do sometimes check the other ones, but uh, wow, big storm next week, it looks like quite possibly. And uh, just in time for me to, it's 2.30 now, and time for me to get to editing and try to get this out as fast as I can before the Leafs play their Tampa Bay Lightning game this afternoon. Yeah, yeah, you know, I was watching that new Amazon hockey documentary there and in it it shows uh you know the Oilers in the finals and McDavid's throwing an absolute screaming baby fit uh you know like throwing a temper tantrum I can just imagine if I was on his team in the dressing room listening to that thinking like I don't even care about the cup anymore I don't want to hear this you know like it was garbage and this is after him like being pouty not not talking to these people on the street that video that kind of went viral and he's being all pouty then he doesn't go take his mvp and it's like something just makes me hate the oilers more and more so for the guy who was asking about me being a vancouver fan and that's more and more become the thing especially as uh i've begun to dislike Connor mcdavid the person more and more over the years anyways uh speaking of people i do actually like as a person, uh, Sheldon Clare, congratulations to you, buddy, if you're watching. Uh, he's a friend of mine. Uh, we may not agree politically on a lot of things, but one thing I do like is how he operates. He he will go to bat for you, right? He will try to get uh, things done for people. So uh, I do appreciate who you are in that way, Sheldon. So congratulations. And, uh, well, uh, we'll see what happens with the rest of BC. But it's not really my business. This ain't a political show, even though 
you know, even though obviously I'm a pretty progressive guy, that's, we're here to talk weather as much as we can generally. Anyways, that's the show. Hit like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, become a channel member or join the Patreon and support me, help me keep making videos like this. I really appreciate everything that people have already done for me. So thanks to all you who are already helping. Um, yeah, you're making it possible, making me, making me happen. And yeah, okay, that's the show. Bye.